Back before COVID, just as the primary process got underway, few would have banked on Joe Biden winning the Democratic presidential nomination. The idea he would be in a position to unveil a vice presidential pick, as he did last week, would almost have been laughable. He lost heavily in Iowa, fared little better in the next two contests, but was saved by a win in South Carolina, a diverse electorate. Just days ago, the press and the pundits had declared this candidacy dead. That was a key moment when the Democratic Party saw him, rather than Bernie Sanders, as the man to beat Donald Trump. What I'm sure he was conveying was that there's no way that you're going to be able to get most of America to support Bernie. And as we saw that happen in the primaries, the people that support, support Bernie and Warren just they do not show up at the polls. Before Super Tuesday, when several states hold nominating contests, key rivals dropped out. Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar stepped aside and gave their support. He won several states, enough to make victory look inevitable. And so closest rivals Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders dropped out too. Joe Biden had all but secured the presidential nomination. I think Joe Biden won with experience and also because they coalesced around Joe Biden because they realized Donald Trump didn't want to face Joe Biden. Joe Biden has already spent eight years in the White House as Barack Obama's vice president. He's been around politics for almost half a century, but he's never had to campaign like this as a pandemic changes the face of presidential politics. There are no big rallies, no crisscrossing the country to speak with supporters. It's now virtually all virtual. We've got to elect the Democratic Senate. Small gatherings, they say, helped Joe Biden to excel, and the crisis has allowed him to highlight the president's actions, something one expert believes helps the challenger. He doesn't have to travel to 50 cities and travel to four and five cities in, in one day. He's able to kind of, you know, lay back and rest as a 77-year-old man. Um, so I think that that helps him. And in addition, you know, all of the mistakes that, Joe, that uh, President Trump is making you know, that have costed, you know, close to 165,000 lives, I think, and counting, I think that, you know, that helps Joe Biden. Three decades after his first presidential bid, Joe Biden has arrived where he wants to be. He's finally convinced his party he's the man for the job. Now, he has 11 weeks to convince the country. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Washington. And our White House correspondent, Kimberly Hawkins, joining us live from Washington, D.C. Uh, with this virtual convention, this is a big change for U.S. electioneering, isn't it? What are the main themes we're going to see? Yeah, well, in terms of a convention, it's an unconventional national convention. Now, there will be uh, all kinds of different themes that will be touched on, but the biggest theme of all will be that encountering the message of U.S. President Donald Trump uniting the party that at times has been somewhat fractured in order to accomplish that task. So a couple of keynote speakers of note, former First Lady Michelle Obama will be speaking, as well as Senator Bernie Sanders, who has been instrumental in pushing many of the Democratic Party's policies further to the left to attract some of those so-called progressive Democrat voters. Uh, but at the same time, there will also be another effort underway, somewhat unusual, and that will be coming from U.S. President Donald Trump. He is going to be visiting a number of battleground states. In fact, he's just left the White House. He will be going to Minnesota as well as Wisconsin and even potentially Iowa, we understand, in order to paint a contrast. Some argue that the president is trolling the Democratic National Convention. And what makes this unusual is typically the other party would sort of stand silent while a national convention is going on. But this is not the case with U.S. President Trump. In fact, he says he will be sending a message that he is the person to do the job for the next four years. Uh, he's got a bit of a tough sell, though, given the fact that most polls show that they favor, in terms of voting, the American public favors Joe Biden over Donald Trump by at least nine percentage points. As we're heading up towards the November elections, one of the key elements, surprisingly perhaps, has become the U.S. Postal Service, and the Democrats are making that a key element of, uh, of the run-up to the elections. Just talk us through what's happening with the controversy around that. Well, it 
all comes down to COVID-19 and the fact that many Americans don't feel safe standing in line for hours to cast a ballot in person. So what many states are doing is saying, look, at, we're going to send out mailing ballots so that you can mail in your vote. Now, the U.S. president is vehemently opposed to this. He says that this is uh, an opportunity for fraud. In fact, as he left the White House just now, he said that he wants to make sure the election is not stolen. What he wants is for people to physically stand in line. He says that he would even support having the voting start early in order to allow for this. Now, what's ironic in all this is the president himself has in the past voted through the mail, although that was a process known as absentee balloting. Uh, but what the sort of argument from the other side is from Democrats is that the U.S. president uh, is trying to reorganize the Postal Service in order to suppress the vote. And as a result, the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is calling back Democrats, uh, the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives later this week, to try and push forward legislation to prevent the president from reorganizing the post office right now. Uh, they say this is to make sure that everyone has a chance to vote. Once again, though, the U.S. president defending this reorganization of the Postal Service, saying that all he wants to do is make sure it saves money. But many people argue that if that was a real priority, why is he doing this now, so close to a U.S. election? That's our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett. Thank you very much indeed, Kimberly.